Welcome back to my studio. Uh, today I thought we would do a little bit of nature journaling together. And over the course of the last few months, I have really taken to nature journaling because um, I think it's a great way to get outside, especially in the summertime, connect with nature and keep up on your daily practice or your creative practice, even if you don't do it daily. Um, it kind of gives you uh, a reason to go out there and explore your surroundings. And for myself, I know that I learn better when I am actually creating around whatever it is that I'm learning. So it has many different purposes. I really enjoy it. Um, one of the things that I really like about it is that you can take a ton of photos while you're out and about and then come back to your studio and document everything in your nature journal. So <clears throat> my nature journal is um, this, uh, this is the brand Tumorta, and I'll leave the link for it below in the description box. Um, it's okay. It is a, I would say, satisfactory uh, journal. I did have my binding break on this one. And I have several of these and I've never had that happen. Uh, it is 140 pound paper, so it will take water, but it is not a hundred percent cotton. I think it is a cotton pulp. And if you're used to painting with a hundred percent cotton paper, you'll notice the difference. But I think for what it is and for the price point, you really can't beat it in terms of having a nature journal that you can take with you. And it's, I love the size of this too. Um, I even went so far because I, um, I guess I got frustrated really with the lack of being able to find what I want out there. So I took some of the fabric that I created, designed and put on spoon flower in my shop there. Um, anytime you create fabric, you have to order a proof. I don't think that's the case anymore, but at the time it was. And I used some of my proof fabric that I got back um, to create my own sketchbook. It's about uh, six by six, I think. But this has uh, 140 pound watercolor paper and this is arches. So this is 100% cotton. As you can see, I have uh, not painted in it yet. Uh, that is coming soon, but I am continuing on in my nature journal and I wanted to give you a quick sneak peek as to what I've been doing. And also we're going to do a two page spread together. So here is, uh, the first page. And this was part of a class that I did where we were talking about yellows. Uh, these are the pigeons that like to roost on the Catholic church next to my house. And this is a little sketch I've got going. I haven't completed it yet. I'll go back in pen, but um, I caught a raccoon in my tree and he was emptying out all of my bird feeders. And I couldn't figure out why my bird feeders were empty every night until I saw him hanging out in the tree. And he didn't seem too concerned that I was there. Um, but I have since switched bird food and put little um, things over them so that uh, he can't get them or she. So, but yeah, I definitely wanted to do a spread on that. And this one is from a photograph that I took back in 2022. And it was at our local community park and it's a wild plum. And with this, I just wanted to kind of try out a different format, a different layout. And this is just a bunch of swatching from a photograph that I took at Aw Sable Chasm. And this is in the Adirondacks in the state of New York where I live. And what I did is I just looked at the photograph and swatched out the colors that I saw as just a little practice. And this is a walk in the park with Maisie, my dog. And she gets sick in the car, so we're limited to where we can walk. So we have walked this neighborhood um, hundreds of miles, I think. But on this particular day, it was in the spring, and I wanted to note some of the flowers that were coming up. 
and the aunt that was visiting me while I painted everything in this journal. And in the spring, of course, we have several different greens happening, and I wanted to swatch some of these. Um, and here it shows the different mixes, like lemon yellow with ultramarine, or lemon yellow with phthalo blue, and so on. And this page, this is a Solomon seal, which grows everywhere around here. And a little quote by Tolkien. And this next spread is... Um, my husband and I just recently got back from a trip to the Catskills where we stayed at a hotel in Roxbury, New York. It is one of our favorite places to stay. It's the Roxbury Motel at Stratton Falls, and they have these beautiful themed tower cottages, and they also have a mansion. They have mansion rooms. Um, we stayed in the mansion first, and then we um, moved over to Dracula's Fangs, which was really cool. But they have a beautiful nature trail behind the hotel. And it is, when I say it's like literally in the middle of nowhere, um, it is. And the nature, it's just beautiful. And this was a large rock shelf and then um, a path going down. And the woodwork and the fencing, they have little tables and chairs under some of these rock shelves where you can have a picnic. It's just really beautiful. And I wanted to capture that in my nature journal. And the next spread is what we'll be working on. And I have already inked this. So I started out with a sketch and because my audio died, I had to refilm this first part. Um, so it is already sketched out in ink and I used a 005. And all I'm gonna say about this is that I went over the sketch that I had done in pencil and um, I talked a little bit about not making super solid lines because it has a tendency to flatten an image. And I think it's okay when you're doing something like flowers um, or a solid structure, but with nature, I didn't want to um, be, you know, too solid of a line for the hills and the trees and stuff. So with that being said, um, I think I'm going to break out my watercolors and we will start painting. And just to side note, this is the first time that I have ever tried masking off um, anything in my nature journal. And the inspiration from this came from these color swatches that I have been doing. And I just masked everything off randomly and picked a very limited color palette. This was focused on purples and greens. And I laid watercolor in there. And after it was dried, I just went back in and kind of intuitively added in some trees or um, birds, things like that. And I did all of that with watercolor. And I also have these two, which I did. I wanted to use a little bit more of an ethereal palette. I wanted to play around and see what I could come up with. and then I wanted to do some swatching based on one of the photographs I had taken in the Catskills of um, these rocks and the greenery and the moss growing on them. And this was the inspiration behind this. And this is a really fun way to uh, develop a color palette of your own and see, see what will happen and all of the nuances that happen when, when these colors start to blend and mix. So this was a lot of fun. So that is where the inspiration for masking all of this came from. And um, I wanted to give it a try and I thought it would be fun to do this together. So, or you can watch me do it and try this for yourself um, later on. But I'm going to go ahead and get some clean water and get my brushes ready and my paint. And I'll see you right back here when I start painting. I've got my brushes over here and I'm using black velvet uh, silver and they're all round brushes just a variety of sizes and I've got my Daniel Smith paints over here and my water and I'm all sprayed and ready to go um, I think what I'm going to do is start with this one and I contemplated whether or not I wanted to keep this like a rainy day and um or if i wanted to make it more of a sunny day and i think i'm going to keep it a rainy day simply because it was <clears throat> and i think i'm going to start off with a little bit of a 
smaller brush because this little block is not that big. But I'm going to wet everything um, from the road back. I think I've got a little bit of yellow <clears throat> in my brush still. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to give this just a good coat of water. And I am, I'm going to mix up some of this Payne's um, blue-gray, and I'm going to add a little bit of this burnt sienna into it. Just to warm it up a little. And I'm just going to dot this in. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that Payne's blue-gray because I'm seeing a lot of blue in the photo. And you can see I'm going right over the tree here and right over this distant hill. And that's all I'm going to do for the sky. And I might wipe my brush off a little bit and pick out some of these um, lighter areas. And that'll read as uh, clouds. Just like that. And this hill in the background is very much uh, the same color, and it's just maybe a little bit darker in value. But I'm going to go ahead and add that in while this is wet, so it's kind of fuzzy. Let's see, we got a little bit of water on there. And I think the next thing I want to do is start adding in um, a little bit of green. And the green is very um, neutralized and kind of muted. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of that gray and mix it right into um, this green that I'm using, which is a, a green appetite genuine. I think that's what it is. Yes. And some of the areas are a little bit more on the yellow side. So I've got some greens mixed up here from my previous painting. And I'm going to go ahead and just add some of these yellows in, this yellowy green. And then I'm going to go back and pick up this, this more grayed down version. And those are just really kind of bleeding in together at this point. So I can drop in a little bit more yellow. I don't want it to be too saturated in color because it was a really uh, gray day out there. And I'm going to add some into the foreground, and this is dry, um, so I'm doing wet on dry here. I'm going to drop in just a little bit of darker green right here. And 
And now I am going to pick up a deep sap green and I'm going to add a little bit of, um, I think this Payne's blue gray into it. It's obviously a very limited color palette, but I want it to be a dark green. And I'm just going to tap in, and the paper's still wet back here. But I'm going to tap in some of these darker bushes and trees. And make sure that I kind of vary them so they don't look... the same and I think there's some stuff going on back here too and all of this back here is really um, diffused So for the road, I'm going to pick up a really um, watered down Payne's blue gray. And I am, I think I'm just going to try and avoid the stripes in the road for now. And this is wet on dry and I just want to put in a quick little wash here we're gonna go back over that with a darker value but the nice thing about this is is when you're working on one of these blocks and you want to let this dry you can work on something else and just a little indication back there of the road I think that's pretty good. Okay, so while that's drying, I'm going to move on to the daisies here. And I think what I want to do is, in order for these daisies to really stand out, um, I'm going to have to put in some sort of a background. And I've got a little bit of pencil line in here that I want to get rid of. So what I'll do is I'm going to wet the area behind the daisies just quickly. And these daisies were actually up against a gray rock. And there was some greenery in there too. But since this block is already predominantly gray, I think what I'd rather do is just add in some fun sky colors and just have fun with this. I might do some pinks and yellows and then towards the bottom maybe a little bit of green. So I've got some of this quinacridone violet and I have a really messy palette here um, and I'm going right in on top of these browns that I have laid out and that's fine. So I'm just going to dab some of these colors in and I've got some yellow. This is a new gamboge. It's a little bit muddy and I'm just going to spread that around a little bit and I'm going to pick up some of this rose matter. And try to get in between the petals here. And this is a pretty small little area. And maybe up towards the top. Um...
I'm going to drop in some green and up towards the top I'm going to add in a little bit of blue. You can do anything that you want in your nature journal, um, but this is a really great place to experiment with different techniques or layouts and certainly color palettes and mediums too. Um, you can try all sorts of things. And I want to get back up here before all of this dries on me. And I'm going to re-wet this. So that I don't have any hard edges forming. And I'm going to drop in a little bit of that rose color. And... Then I'm going to go into, I actually have a lavender, so I'm going to drop some of that in, and it's it's pretty opaque. It's not a super transparent kind of a color, but the whole idea is that I want the petals on these daisies to read white. And so I thought this would be just a fun little way to do that. There. And obviously I've got to let that dry before I can go in and start adding adding anything to these petals, any sort of shadow colors or anything. So we're going to move right on to this one. And I think what I'd like to do is lay in, a, I'm going to lay in some water and then I'm going to add in some green because these little towers here that were part of the um, walkway on the trail um, are completely surrounded by trees and flowers and it's just really pretty. So I'm going to try to avoid um, the wooden areas because they're really light colored wood. And I'm just going to do kind of a mix of greens here. I'm going to do this green appetite and I'm going to add in a little bit of lemon yellow just to make it a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer. And I think maybe I wanted to add in a little bit of sky color too. So I'm going to go right into this thalo blue and I'm going to add in some sky before I forget. It's always good to have some sky holes in your trees and I think that's pretty good. And the rest we can fill in with green. And all of this here um, are just like would be greenery showing through these areas here. And this is really a no pressure kind of a way to create too. And like masking fluid, I could have masked all of this out, but I really don't like masking fluid. <laughs> so I don't want to use it, um, especially not my nature journal. I mean, this is um, supposed to be fun. And I, I masking fluid and the hard edges that it leaves. And I always tend to want to scrub them out. Um, I would rather paint around something, I think, than try and mask it out. And I'm going to do a little bit of I'm going to do a little bit of light lighter green. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon yellow into this and then some water. And I am going to add a little pop this is really wet right now, so it's really going to spread, but that's okay. Um, but I'm going to add in just a little pop of opera pink while it's still wet to indicate um, some flowers. 
and maybe a heat or two. And I really want to get in between these areas here. And I'm going to add some darker green up here just to give it a little bit of a um, a little bit of a like a vignette, you know. And since this is such a small block, I'm not going to get too crazy with details, and I don't want to overwork anything really. Um, so something like that will work. And I think for this last part, I think what I'll do is start off with the sky. I want this to be a really sunny, um, clear day kind of a sky. And I am just going to very quickly wet this area up here. I got a little bit of blue on my brush. That's okay. And then I'm going to drop in some of this, some of this thalo blue. And I want to keep the, color kind of concentrated at the top and I'll leave some gaps to indicate some clouds I think that dried really quick on me. So I'll try and lift some of this color out towards the bottom. There we go. And maybe right here. And if that doesn't work, you can always take your paper towel and try to lift some of this out. And I'm going to leave that. If I feel like going back over that, I'll do it once it dries. So for these mountains in the background, I'm going to use a, um, I'm going to use a green that is got a little bit of blue mixed in and I'm going to add a little bit of the Payne's gray just to desaturate this and then I'm going to really water it down um, I want this to be a light value because typically anything that's in the distance is going to be cooler and it's also going to be lighter in value so just make sure you pick your colors and if you've got the values right it really doesn't matter what kind of color you use um, as long as you've got the values correct so i want to make sure that i keep this really light back here and I'll add something like that. And as we come forward towards the foreground, things are going to get a little bit warmer and they're going to get a little bit darker.
I'm just going to brush right over all of this down here. And I'm doing that because um, I don't want any hard edges. So, okay. And I'm picking up um, a warmer green as I'm coming into the foreground. And I can go even a little bit darker in the foreground. So I was going to add in a couple little bushes over here, and this is entirely too wet. So I've got to wait until this dries a little bit. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to hit this with the blow dryer, and then when I come back, I'm going to go ahead and start on my second pass, and I'll be adding in the tree and working on my uh, daisies and the rest of the spread. Okay, everything is pretty dry and I'm going to start back up here. And what I think I'm going to do is go in and add this little tree here. And I'm going to start off with a, a bluish green. I'm not going to go super dark right off the bat because I can always go back in and um, add in a dark. But I'm just kind of skipping around here and this is a really watered down mix. And while it's still wet, I can go in and add, um, I can add a darker value. I think the key to this with trees is um, just make sure that you don't 
lose all of the light areas that you added in and you don't want to cover up all of the sky holes either. And I want to keep it fairly loose. I don't um, I don't want to overwork this. I have a tendency to get super um, you know, picky when it comes to the details. And this is such a small journal. You know, the idea is to kind of keep it this little, this fresh kind of feel. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is take that same green and just go in here and start adding some things that live here back here and I'm going to wet my um I'm going to rinse my brush off and while it's damp I'm going to soften out this and I'm going to soften out this edge at the bottom I'm going to make this a little bit darker. And I think I just lost my road back here. And that's supposed to kind of sweep around. Yeah, I think I lost a little bit. And I'm just picking up some of these different greens. I'm doing a little bit of a like a dry brush. Just to add some texture to this. Okay, I've got this pen work back here, and it's just kind of bothering me. The, this dark green doesn't match up to it, so I'm going to add in a little bit of that back here. And I think that needs to be a little bit darker. Like I said, I don't want to get too crazy with these little blocks because they are so little. Um, I'm going to pick up some of this Payne's Blue Gray on a fairly dry brush and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to lightly brush across um, some of these areas. And now that I'm looking at the photograph, I'm thinking to myself, maybe I should add in a little bit of reflection. Um, just a little bit of the grass and the tree just to give an indication that the road is wet. And I'm going to do that by wetting that side, picking up a little bit of this Payne's Blue Gray with some green mixed in. And I'm just going to drop in a little bit here and along the edge of the road. And there really isn't much on the other side except for I'm going to wet this and 
it's really right up against the edge of the road. There's a little bit of a reflection from the from this grass. And I can add that in. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more of this um, Payne's blue-gray because it's really kind of desaturated. Something like that. And while this is still sort of wet, I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the Payne's blue-gray. And I'm going to start at the center of the road. And I'm going to drag my brush out. I wish it was a little more wet than that. Um, so I'm going to take a damp brush and kind of blend this out a little bit. And I want to keep this concentrated, this darker gray, kind of in the center of the road, because that's what I'm seeing in a in a photograph. And I do want to get this gray in between these two yellow stripes too. And it really pretty much ends right about there. And I'm kind of ignoring the white stripes on the shoulder. I'm just going to darken that a little. Same thing with this over here. And I'm going to add a little bit of water over here. And I'm going to do the same thing, just to add a little bit of this Payne's blue gray. And I get such a glare from the overhead light, sometimes it's hard to see. And take my brush and turn my journal this way. I'm just lifting out some of the some of the color there. I think that's pretty good. So before I put in these yellow lines, I want to let that completely dry. And I can go ahead and move over here to the dandelions, not dandelions, the daisies. And I am going to pick up a smaller brush and find my daisy photo here. And I'm going to start off with a, um, a really warm yellow for this center. So I'm going to use my new gamboge. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this right, right in, wet on dry. And what I see in the photo is um, some green around around the edge of the center so i'm gonna i want to drop that in while it's wet and just let that do its thing 
I might pick up a little bit of burnt, um, burnt sienna. I don't think that is a little bit too wet, so I'm going to go back in. I lifted out the color, and I'm going to go back into this new gamboge. And paint that in, and then I'm going to pick up the green. And I'm just using whatever green I've got on my palette here. This puddle that I've got going on. And if it starts bleeding in a little bit too much to the yellow, you can always just, you know, dry your brush off and then go back in and pick up some of that color. And I'm going to add in a little bit of the burnt sienna. And I'm going to do the same thing for this last one, or these last two. Okay, and we can make another pass um, once that's dry. Now, for the petals themselves, uh, I kind of need to decide what direction I want the light coming from and where the shadows are going to sit. So I'm probably going to have my light source coming from this direction. And I am going to mix up some of my Payne's blue-gray. And I don't have a, a Payne's gray, that's why I'm using this. But I'm going to warm this up a little bit with some of the burnt sienna so that I've got a warm gray. And then I'm going to add a lot of water to it because it's a shadow color. And I feel like if your shadows are super prominent and they're catching your eye, then they are not, then they're not subtle enough. And I'm not sure what happened here. So I'm going to, oh, okay. <gasps> Piece of paper towel. That's a lot better than a drop of paint. So I am just going to pick out some areas here on each one. And I'm going to do this loosely. Uh, I don't want this, like I said, to get, um, you know, super precious by any means. I feel like that's too dark. So I'm going to pick some of the, um, some of these in here. Here in shadow, and then our underneath, or maybe the back side of some of these. Like this one would be in shadow. And 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 because there are folds in these petals, you're going to see, um, you're going to see some like gray stripes. And you have these folds. And you can add those in. And I'm going to add a little bit more of the shadow color, obviously, to the ones that are behind to try to give it, you know, a little bit of dimension with, without totally um, losing all of the white. Okay, I'm going to leave that like that for now, and I'm going to go ahead and add in the stems. 
And I'm going to start with a light green, a warm green. I'm going to do these leaves in the same color and I can always go back in and add a little bit of shading to this. Okay. So, um, what I'm going to do is once this is dry, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to wet around the um, petals again. And then I'm going to go in and add some more color, drop some more color in so that we have a little bit more contrast and it'll push the flowers forward. But I've got to wait for that to dry before we can do anything like that. And for this, I think what I'm going to do is grab some yellow ochre. And I've got a pretty messy palette going on here. I'm going to add a little bit of this, um, this rose matter into it. And I want to create a, just a really nice light color for uh, the wood here. I have to decide actually. if I want this wood to be lighter or darker than my background. And I think it would be easier to make this darker. That way I don't have to worry about going back in and re-wetting everything to do the background. So I'm actually gonna mix up a darker color and I've got some burnt umber and I'm just adding it right into this puddle of um, Payne's gray that I've got going, Payne's blue gray. Because this is, all of these are, it's weathered wood. And if I stay like at a medium value, then I can go back in and add a little bit of shading to this just to, you know, give it a little bit of something, something. But it's, this is so tiny that, you know, trying to get super detailed or adding a lot of texture to this just in my, in my mind doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So. There we go. And now for this bottom part, I think that this got a little bit too dark over here. So in order to adjust that, I'm going to make, um, I'm going to make this hill and probably this one right here, just a little bit darker. Cause there's too big of a jump here in between the values. I think I'm just going to add in some some little grasses and stuff right here in the foreground. And I'm just using the um the tip of my brush and a darker value. 
just make sure when you do this that um, you're varying the direction. And this really helps give the sense that, you know, you're kind of standing at the top of a hill um, looking off onto all of these um, mountains. And you can definitely use a smaller brush, which is what I should have done, but no worries. And if you want to give it more of like a vignette, you can make these in the corner a lot taller. And I like to have these kind of angled in. Okay, I'm going to go back to this one and I'm going to add in the yellow lines and I'm going to kind of muddy it up a little bit. I don't want, you know, these super bright yellow, just freshly painted <laughs> lines because they are a little, um, a little muddy looking. They're not super bright. And we've got a really gray day, too, so. And I'm being careful not to, um... paint over the gray that's in between these two lines. There we go. And I'm going to go back to this one. And I'm going to add in Some more water. I'm going to try to get in between some of these petals the best that I can. And I think when I drop in the paint, I'm going to drop the paint in right around the flower and let it bleed out instead of dropping in paint around the edges of the border and because I want the the darkest concentration of color to be around the flower and I do like the colors that I used so I'm going to go right back into this this rose matter and I'm going to just Drop it right in here. And I'm going straight into the pan. I'm not watering it down at all. And I want to make sure that I'm kind of sticking with the same colors that I used before, just a little bit more concentrated. And that lavender doesn't really want to spread too much. Here we go. And what I'll probably end up doing is going back over this with a little bit of pen, with a little bit of a thicker line on the outer edge of the petals.
Okay, so for um, this again, I think I am going to pick up the same color that I used, and I'm just going to make another pass over this, um, and I'm going to pick a side and just add in a little bit of shading. And like I said, it's kind of hard because this is um, really small and the shading is not going to be super noticeable. And I am going to go back through here with my pen and add in some more line work. And there's a little bit of shadow and underneath here. And I'm going to pick up some dark green and add in some indications of some grass here in the foreground and some stems just by flicking my brush. Kind of the same motion that we did down there. And I want to fill in a couple of these little gaps here where there's no green. So this is a really fun, relaxing way to create. And like I said, you can um, experiment and play with colors and techniques. And it's really low pressure. And I did want to mention, if you've made it this far in the video and you're still with me, um, that I have a fun um, free weekend of art coming up. And it is myself along with several other instructors. And I'm honored to be a part of it. It's called Make Create Express 2024. And if you love creating, and the teachers are phenomenal, um, expressive type of art. Um, um, it's just a lot of fun. And I will be there for the free weekend, not only um, chatting with everybody, but I am going to take some of these classes, some of these um, free workshops that are offered. So if you're interested in that, and it's like I said, it's totally free for the weekend. It's a weekend pass. You can take as many of the classes. I believe there are 26 instructors, so there will be 26 classes that you can take um, this weekend. And a lot of them are short and sweet, so you can get in some creating time and um, watch as many of them as you can. Take notes so that you can remember later how to do something. And it's just going to be a lot of fun. And I hope you uh, join me over there. I'll leave the link down below so that you can get your weekend pass. So with that said, I think for this block here that we've completely ignored, um, I'm going to wet this block and actually now that I think about that, I'm going to let this dry and when it dries I'm going to erase all my pencil lines and then I'll go back in because once I add watercolor on top of my pencil it's not going to come off. So I want to think about this block a little bit more. But in the meantime I am going to add in these colors that I've used. So I am going to add some of this dark green. That's a super easy way to swatch. And definitely got to add some of this Payne's blue gray. 
So that was dominant in a lot of these blocks. And we've got some of this burnt sienna. For the wood. And I definitely want to get in some of the pink that I used here. And I used a lot of this um, rose matter. And I want to do some blue of the sky. And I think I want to do this warm green that I've been using. And that had a little bit of yellow mixed into it. And definitely some of this new gamboge. Okay. So I've got this uh, pretty much completed. I think what I'll do is I'm going to add a little bit more pen work into this. And when I come back, I'll show you uh, the finished. Okay, so here is the final, and um, as you can see, I got a little crazy with the border, and this is usually what I end up doing, um, picking away with these little details. Um, I really enjoy uh, doing stuff like this because uh, you just get lost in the process. So I'll explain to you exactly what I did. Um, I put in a light wash of green watercolor all the way around. And then I went in with my Micron, my 005, and I just added in some of these leaves and vines. And after I had gone in and penned these in, I realized that there just wasn't really enough contrast. So I went in and put in a little bit of veining into each of the leaves, and that helped to um, make it a little bit more visible against the light background. So something else I did was add in this text. Um, Micron pens again is 02. And then I just um, wrote in some little things here uh, uh, next to each picture to remind myself of um, what it was that I was basically annotating. So um, and then I've got my my color palette here and I didn't do anything with that I didn't I felt like this border um, makes it already a little bit busy and I didn't want to um, add anything else but what I did do is I added another wash of gray to the road because I felt like it wasn't dark enough and then I went in with a white gel pen and I usually I have a whole bunch of white gel pens um, because some work better than others. Uh, the Signo Uniball works pretty well on this watercolor paper and I had to put in these white lines and I also added a little bit of white back here into the background to indicate the road going around and I bumped up the white on some of the petals because I had um, actually Put the watercolor wash over some of the petals and i just wanted to bump the white back up again i did lighten some of the wood here it just wasn't showing up uh, as well as i would like so i got out a colored pencil and just lightly went over um, this side with a colored pencil and then down here at the bottom and this is one of my favorite things to do is at the end when you're adding in all of these little details 
Um, sometimes going back in with watercolor doesn't show up as well as we would like it to. So um, I use other things like um, these gel pens. I love working with these gel pens and these Posca um, pens are they're actually paint markers and they show up really well. So I use that uh, white Posca marker for some of the flowers. I use the pink gel pen for the pink flowers. And then as I was looking at it, I thought, you know, I've got all of these little bits of yellow throughout and I wanted to bring the yellow down here into this one. So I grabbed this Posca marker and these are the kind of pens. They've got a shaker in them and you just push the tip down to prime the um, tip here. And I just really quickly added in some of these little flowers and I really like the way it turned out. And I think I'm going to continue to experiment with uh, my masking tape and laying out, um, laying out different positions and playing around with these different borders and stuff. So, um, and this here um, is actually, I, I originally had some text in here. What I decided to do instead was just paint in some of these like striations that you see in the rock shelves. And that's what I um, put here, that this is the color palette of the rocks and moss. So um, I feel like it's all tied in together because it's um, very much the same color palette throughout. And then at the end, I just went in and I had some fun detailing. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you can catch me on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Um, I have been creating a lot of classes lately. And um, I have a free weekend of art coming up. I am super honored to be teaching with Make Create Express. And I mentioned this earlier in the video. Um, I'll leave all the links below. But if you want to get your... Um, your weekend pass uh, can just click on the link and sign up and then you can take all sorts of lessons from myself. Um, I've got one lesson and then you'll get one lesson from 23 other instructors. And um, if you like the free weekend, then maybe you'll feel compelled to sign up for the year long workshop and I'll be teaching two classes um, and these classes are released uh, once a week. So you'll get a class from every instructor. Actually, you'll get two classes from every instructor, but it'll be over the course of a year. So every week you'll get a new class and all of that information will be at the link below. Sign up for your free weekend pass. I would love to see you there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be creating. I'm going to be taking classes from all of the other instructors. And I think it's going to be a really good time. So thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you over there at Make Create Express. Bye-bye.